Vice Regent Cheryl Kanabi to lead us in the pledge, America's Creed, and the preamble to the Constitution, which are on the back of the purple. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The American Creed. I believe in the United States of America as the government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the government, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. And the preamble. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish the Constitution for the United States of America. Thank you, Cheryl. Now, if we could all join in singing God Bless America, and hopefully some of Things better than me. <laughs> <laughs> year at this special site, um, the special site uh, to both our chapter uh, with this beautiful monument behind us and to our SAR brothers with their monument just steps away from us, um, and special to the people of Port Republic, um, and also special because of what, what it represents, remembrance. Memorial Day is a day of remembrance, and so how appropriate that we gather here to honor and remember the men and women who gave their lives for us and this country to protect our freedom and our way of life. At this time, I would also like to take a moment to recognize our POWs and MIAs. Even though the fate of these soldiers is unknown, we will always keep a place in our hearts 
for those who are not here, and we honor those Americans who went off to war but have yet to return home. They may still be lying on the battlefield, or they may be in the hands of our enemies. We don't know. They are unaccounted for. Their remains have not been recovered. Their whereabouts are unknown. And these American heroes are POW or MIA missing in action or prisoners of war. Okay, at this time, I would like to thank uh, Mayor Nikki Guyverson uh, for joining us here today and would invite her to come up and say a few words. Well, welcome to Port Republic. We're happy to have all of you here. As I was thinking about what to share with you today, I kept coming back. It kept coming back to me that we all had a story to tell. Some of you are ancestors of some very brave, courageous people who certainly had a story to tell. We would not be here today if their stories were not shared. Recently, I've been involved in two grant programs for children. The most recent is where students are preparing for a research project on the COVID pandemic. It made me think that if these stories were not shared, it is all forgotten. I asked the students, who are you going to interview for your project? Um, who was affected the most? One student said, my father, because he had to work at home. Someone else said, restaurant workers, hospital workers, grocery store workers. And the student said, we were all affected because our school was on the computer and we could go to school in our pajamas. Do you remember the people outside of the stores counting how many customers were going in the store? Remember no toilet paper or paper towels? No chicken? We all have a story to tell. If nothing else, it should give us an appreciation of all that we do have. The other grant program was a month-long study during the summer on what we would do if there really was a zombie apocalypse. How could we build a new society? The students broke into teams for what they believed to be the necessary work that had to be done. There were home builders and designers, gardeners and farmers for food production. There were students that designed practical clothing, even security guards. And when the security guards worked with me, they made wool felted balls as zombie diverters. When the zombie was coming toward them, they knew that if they threw a wool felted ball somewhere, that the zombie would start going toward that, so they would be safe. And this, at first, it seemed very strange, but it was not very different from what our early settlers had to do to live a successful life in America, and it seemed that the students could relate to it for that reason. Nowadays, we have computers in our phones that could give us an answer to any question we might have, but that does not replace the fact that we're designed as human beings to be imaginative problem solvers and thinkers. The stories that we have to tell are not primarily for us, but for the people who hear them. My grandmother was a Jewish Russian peasant who was married at 14, had her first child at 15. Her husband was wounded by a Russian Cossack, which made them realize that this was not a place to raise a child. He moved to New York to make a way for his wife and child to come to America. My grandmother, with others, had to walk at night from Russia to Belgium to get on a boat so they would not be found. I don't know how she found her husband, but she did, and they had three more children. When her husband got too sick to work, my grandmother opened up a Russian tea house in Princeton and lived above the shop with her family. Although she could not read or write English, she was an excellent cook with the gift of hospitality. Eventually, her husband died, They had, um, and, and the man who delivered her eggs became her new husband. They had my mother, and the rest is my history. This is a part of my story now, which has given me and my children and my grandchildren great inspiration, especially when we start something new or in a tough place. Your stories are meant to be told or they're lost, so I encourage you to write them down, tell anyone, especially children who may need to carry that inspiration with them, as it is their part of their fa fabric of who they are. Then this becomes their history as well. Thank you so much, Thank you, Mayor Garberson. <clears throat> we appreciate you being here today. Um, un unlisted in your program is readings from the SAR. I apologize. Carly, if you could come forward and just give us a brief reading.
Good morning, everyone. How are we today? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are we today? Good morning. That sounds much better. For a day like this, a beautiful sunny day, it's warm. Okay, it's May. We have met. But I am here to bring greetings from all of the members of the New Jersey SAR. There's only about 350 of us. I know we're small compared to the DAR, but we love our relationship with the DAR, and we really appreciate the chapter's relationship with the Lafayette chapter. Now, there's a person who is not here today, and she really loved this event. Would you all please rise, and let's have a moment of silence for Suzanne Smith. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carly. We all miss Suzanne. Um, <laughs> at this time, if I could have uh, Charlie and Jim do the uh, wreath presentation. would be playing tap at this point, but my phone is overheated. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You may be seated if you were seated. Um, on Memorial Day, we lay wreaths, place flags, assemble parades, and spend time with our family and friends. Hopefully we each take a moment to reflect on those who died in all the wars and actions that had been sacrificed for this country. Each mile of sweat and pain, each flag saluted, is to pay homage to one's service member's life and their family. The last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of September, runners across New Jersey complete the run for the fall, which is an event to raise, aw event to raise awareness of the lives of those who've died, to rejuvenate their memories and keep their spirits alive, and to support organizations that aid the families of those killed, and to aid in the healing process for Native New Jersey residents whose lives have been affected by the war. This monument is a stop each year on New Jersey's run for the fallen, and the soldier that we honor at this stop is Sergeant Clarence L. Floyd. Sergeant Floyd was 28 years old out of Newark, New Jersey, and he was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 320th Field Artillery Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He was killed December 10, 2005 when his unit was attacked by enemy forces using small arms fire during combat operations in Iraq. Sergeant Clarence L. Floyd, Jr., 28, was a canning crew member assigned to the 1st Battalion, um, a father of five, and he was killed in Kaji, about 20 miles north of Baghdad. Family members said that he was shot in the head by a sniper. Floyd joined the Army in October of 2003 after holding a succession of minimum wage jobs, hoping to be able to provide better for his family. He was trained as a marksman and was assigned to Fort Campbell. He was deployed to Iraq at 
the end of September. Relatives said Floyd was an easygoing family man who enjoyed playing basketball and other sports. He's survived by his wife, Deirdre, a stepdaughter, stepsons, and a son, Devon Patey, and a daughter, Kayla Floyd. Floyd's mother said that she talked to her son about two weeks before he passed. It's hell over here. It's nothing like we're being portrayed, what's being portrayed on TV, his mother recalled him saying. He's buried in Calverton National Cemetery in Suffolk County, New York. This is just a single story of the sacrifices made since our country began, but I hope by sharing this story with you today that you keep the spirit of Memorial Day in each of you. this time, if I could have Lonnie, if I can give the benediction. Before I give the benediction, uh, I was looking for an obituary, I don't know, some kind of recording that you could find in some kind of newspaper. And I ran across by accident this incredible piece of information, and I just thought it was fun. Uh, it was a song that was written in 1904, and it happened to have the chorus, so I thought I would write it down. It's called My Own United States. I love every inch of the very And thank all of you for joining us, and please travel safe on your way home and for the rest of this Memorial Day week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.